For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger, Because we have professional-grade supplies for every industry, even hard-to-find products. And we have same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Dark Force Attachments, how soul loss and soul retrieval are connected to that. Back with Ariel Starbird. Again, the website, holistichealthcoachingny.com. I'm going to hand it over to you and give us an introduction. Okay. Well, I could easily talk for 12 hours, and I feel like I'm just scratching the surface. I really want to give people the most important point. And I realize that for a lot of people, this is totally uncharted territory. They don't understand it. It's scary. They, don't, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't want to do this kind of work themselves. And the only reason they even most of the time ask the questions about it is because they're dealing with something like this. They wish they weren't, but they are. And now they need to know how this all works and how to get rid of the dark force attachment. So first of all, I just want to preface uh, everything we're going to talk about today was that if you are not afraid, if you are in a neutral kind of a, even a stoic attitude, uh, even if you're dealing with darker, scarier information, you're not likely to, to open up doors to dark forces. But if you're scared of the information, you're afraid you're going to get an attachment just by listening about it, which you won't necessarily. Um, information is neutral. It's not necessarily positive or negative. So just, just hearing about the topic isn't going to get you a detachment, but your fear could. So it's really important not to be afraid of the topic and um, be courageous uh, in, in even just listening about it. But if someone feels that they can't listen to this kind of information because they, they're afraid they might get an attachment, then maybe they're not ready and that's okay. Then don't. But if you're if you feel like you're ready, you're curious, you want to know, um, then then you know it's a very deep rabbit hole. On Reddit, there's a paranormal board, and I've read some of the comments, and they're saying, you know, I didn't buy into any of this until it started happening, and I experienced it. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to bring these topics up, because that is a problem. And until you experience it, it's easy to say this doesn't exist. But when you experience uh-huh. it and you need help, you need somebody to help you, to talk you through it, and, or at least say, this could be a potential out there. And that's what you're doing right now, is educating. Exactly. Um, and I don't have written notes or anything like that. It's more of a conversation. So I'm going to try to focus on what the audience needs at this moment. And the main idea here to understand, uh, I'm going to start with the big picture first, because I think the big picture gets, gets lost when people are dealing with the uh, day-to-day problems of dealing with, with, with an attachment. They're in a crisis mode and, and they don't know, they don't understand the big picture. The big picture is that um, this planet is, is multidimensional. So there's all sorts of entities and energies and timelines that are parallel uh, at the same time existing here. There's dark, dark entities and light entities. And they've been here for an extremely long time. Some of them have been here before, before humans were here. They, they think this is their home too. Uh, some are visitors. There's a little bit of both. Some are new, some are, some are old, some are coming in as a result of newer portals opening up, some are ancient, and sometimes they work together, sometimes they fight with each other too. There's all kinds of stuff going on in sort of close with the shadows behind the scenes of basic human life. Uh, there's quite a bit of action. And so if, if we understand that, if we don't think that we're the center of, of the universe, uh, that our, our human species is the center of the universe, that there's actually a lot of life and they have their own agendas, they have their own history, they have their own goals. Sometimes they see us as allies, sometimes they see us as enemies, sometimes they don't care about us at all, sometimes they see us as a resource, um, sometimes they want to worship us. It's, it's pretty crazy what's going on out there. So, but for, for our main topic today, we're going to talk about the negative ones because the positive ones aren't the problem. Usually they, there, there's lots of positive beings. I'm just going to add that in here so that people understand that there is that, that, that duality. There's archangels, angels, positive, uh, uh, positive, uh, spirit guides, positive, uh, human-like beings, but because they're not, they're not a problem, they're helpers. 
uh, that's not what we would call an exorcist, right? So the dark force attachments are the ones that cause people tremendous amount of uh, fear, terror, harm, damage, and um, but a lot of times it's more mental than physical, and, uh, and as well as perhaps you would say it's affecting their energy bodies and their soul and their spirit, and it's only somewhat manifesting on the, on, on the physical. That's why it's so confusing to people, because if they're not intuitively aware of those other densities and dimensions, it's easy to conclude, well, nothing like that could be going on if I don't see it in front of me. And if I don't immediately see it, then, then it's not there. But that's not the right conclusion. So usually people uh, discover that they have dark force attachments uh, about half the time they discover it themselves. They see it in dreams or they feel it. They feel something negative there. They don't know exactly what it is. They feel it as an energy or they think it's a person, uh, like, a, like, a, like either a dead person or a living person doing some kind of magic to them at a distance, doing something bad for them. And also that does exist. A lot of times when people think it's another person doing it to them, it's actually an entity doing it uh, to them, pretending to be that person, because they're kind of trickstery. They like to cause conflict between people, and they know that if they make this person, this vulnerable po- person, think that's another person doing it, and, and the person doesn't believe that it could be an entity, well, they've just created an enormous amount of chaos in that person's life, and conflict, and maybe an outright feud that they can, be, and, and why is that important? Because when they create conflict and war and strife, it creates a lot of this uh, negative energy. People exude this negative energy called loosh. You can even look it up. It's a technical term. And these entities feed on it. They feed on this energy. Just like vampires uh, drink blood. And I think I, I, it may be that once upon a time there were literal uh, vampires. I'm talking more energetic vampires. They, they like to steal energy because for a variety of reasons, they've been denied the human experience, these dark forces. Sometimes uh, on purpose, and sometimes they lost it through, through their own um, poor behavior. So sometimes it's a result of quote unquote punishment from a higher force because they just became so evil that they weren't allowed to have a body anymore and come here in a body. And in some cases, uh, it's it's through karmic consequence to their own behavior that they lose a body. Sometimes people ask, uh, like regular people ask me in a session when I tell them that these dark forces, the reason they are attached to you is because they want to vicariously have a experience of emotion and uh, materiality. And they, and they tell me why. Why does it come here? It's so stressful. It's so difficult. Uh, I have all these health issues. Uh, I would I would much rather just like be in heaven, <laughs> sit in heaven and have no problems. And also I understand that. Uh, that's not what it looks like from the other side. From the other side, it's very appealing to go and have experiences in, in and um, experiences that you can't predict, to have the unknown. It's very attractive for the soul to go into the unknown and, and have a learning experience. And there's quite a bit that can be uh, what we would call like karma, you can create a lot of positive karma. You can you can create a lot of positive spiritual growth for yourself in in these uh, physical experiences. I don't exactly know why it's like that, but but I have observed that that's the case. And these dark force entities, uh, those that have lost their ability to have physicality and, and to have a body, it's it's kind of a privilege, and they lose that privilege through their evil actions. They then try to attach to people to souls that are currently in body to live vicariously through them to feed on their energy and to re-experience some of the things they most miss about being here. So like, for example, somebody who has some drug addiction might have attachments of spirits of deceased who uh, didn't go to the light and who are seeking to have that drug experience again or, or different, different types of experiences. In some cases, it could be as simple as horseback riding. There was a woman who really loved to ride horses, and she had her father, spirit of her father, attached to her because her father loved the daughter, and he loved horses, and he loved riding horses, so he didn't want to let go of having that, that, that experience. I, said, you know, it's, I know that some people would say, well, I would rather go to heaven. That's what she's saying now. <laughs> but once you're out of the body, you might see things from a very different perspective. 
So it, it really, it really helps to be able to see uh, the behavior of all of these different attaching spirits, their motivations and, and why they do what they do. Um, what attracts them to other human beings uh, in order to help them go to the light. Because that's the goal ultimately of someone who does spiritual cleansing, like a shaman or an, or an exorcist. And I don't mean that in a religious way, but just someone who clears these dark forces to go to the light. You have to be able to understand them. And not so much empathize like you would with a person, but um, uh, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit. Maybe the word I was looking for is not necessarily sympathize with them, but a little bit of empathy helps to understand their journey, even if it's a very, very evil entity that's attached to a person that's causing them an enormous amount of harm and damage. If, if you start to hate that entity, you probably can't clear it. You, you really have to understand their journey and, and respect the fact that there, for some reason, this particular energy is on a darker trajectory and it does need to go to the light. And there has to be a kind of a universal love there to, and, but a powerful strength to help them to go to the light. Um, I don't mean like a human kind of love, like from one human to another, um, but more of a universal kind of love where you can, can respect that everyone has their own journey and, evil, and even evil entities do. And you have to be able to uh, communicate and understand how to help them go to the light. But a lot of times they don't want to. They are they are addicted to this dark energy and they have to be sort of maybe coerced or negotiated with and convinced that there is a better way. Um, maybe it's a little bit like doing counseling with the entity where you, where you help them to let go of their own attachment to this realm and, and help them to, to seek the light and, and then work in the same way with the person and help the person. And if, and if the, there's a client coming to me asking for this help, ultimately they have to learn how to do this for themselves. They have to coach and counsel themselves to move towards the light, to release dark force attachments, to release their addictions, to release their vices. And they have to be on that path every day. And if they're not, if they fall off the, uh, the train and they go into a darker direction, that's when they will start to attract these dark forces. Well, you also help with cleansing. And so what does that mean? How do you do that? So there's different degrees of cleansing because there's different degrees of attachment that a person, that a negative entity can have to a person uh, or a place or a thing or an animal uh, or land. And you, uh, whether it's a person, place or thing, uh, or even a kind of a non-tangible, like a piece of music, anything can get a dark force attachment. And depending on the degree of the attachment, it could just be very shallow, very superficial attachment, or it could be very deep, very, very, uh, like a, like a braiding of the entity and the soul. And that's the most damaging for the, for the person that, that has that. And so there's different levels of clearing. A clearing could take a few minutes. If it's very shallow, it could take several months. If it's one of these deeper interbraiding between the person's soul and the entity. I can give you an example where I've seen that. Um, in the past, I've had multiple clients who did some sort of dark arts in past lives, uh, actively, consciously, deliberately tried to, uh, and successfully, um, invoked dark force entities of different, sort of different, um, uh, cultural backgrounds and, uh, in different religions, there's different names for them and they would w seek to work with them and get their help to accomplish tasks. And there was always a price to pay. When you work with dark forces, there's always a price to pay. They want either a part of your soul. They want a part of your power. And eventually, they want your children. They want you to sacrifice your children. They want, they want your blood. They, they eventually want your whole life, all of you. But initially, when people start out, it's a very vain seeking after power. And they don't, they, either they don't realize that they're going to have to pay a hefty price, or they think that they're the exception. They're not going to be asked because they're so special that um, they're, they're going to be able to control these dark forces and get all the power, and the dark force will not be able to overpower them. And it never works that way, ever, not ever. The dark force eventually always overpowers the person 
and uh, takes parts of their soul. And so those people who are like dark sorcerers, sort of personalities, uh, whether they are of some ancient tradition or religion or the new age kind, which there's plenty of, uh, they are, um, they are actively working with these uh, dark forces consciously and trading soul parts. And, and so at the end, there might only be some small percent of the person's soul left uh, within that person. And most of the other soul parts are tied up with these dark, uh, dark force attachments. And it's really the dark force attachments that are acting through that person. And that's where, the word possession, which is really scary to a lot of people. The idea of possession is just terrifying to people that somebody could possess their body and that they would be a slave to the dark forces. Um, as it, as it should be, I would say it, it should be terrifying existentially. I don't mean that people should sit there being scared, but it, sometimes fear can be a kick in the butt to do the right thing. So if people are scared of anything, be scared of the right thing. So, uh, you know, so, you, so, uh, some people are scared of success, but what is, you know, what behooves us to be scared of is uh, making deals with dark forces, trying to get boons from them, trying to get benefits from them, because that always ends badly. So, um, so don't do it. <laughs> uh, and it's not worth it. It's never worth it. And so eventually, uh, if people get uh, the, this kind of, more serious possession, you, you can't, you can't just like die and escape that. And when you are born in your next incarnation, you're still dealing with that. You're this innocent baby. You want to start over and you can't because now that those dark forces pursue you from one life to another, and they will keep pursuing you forever until you actively clear them out. And so I've had multiple clients in the past who've contacted me because they've had these deals and gratings with these dark force attachments um, in their soul. And they had very, very peculiar manifestations of these dark forces that they don't ever remember asking for. They're not aware of why those things are there, but sometimes they're a little bit intuitive and they're even told, you know, that we, we worked together in the past and, and I want to work with you again. And I'm here to, you know, I can do this and this for you if you do this and this for me. It's always a trade. And then if they hear that, some of them, I've, I've had some clients who buy into it. They're like, okay, that sounds cool. And some of them right away say, nope, don't want that. Don't want any part of it. Uh, those that say yes, very quickly regret it. And those that say no, still have a really hard time because they don't immediately know who to go to. Who do you go to for help with something like this? Yeah. You know, and a lot of times they're embarrassed that they made deals in, in a past life. Sometimes they, they have flashbacks or they go to like past life regression therapy or something like that or in meditation. It comes to them. Oh, I did this and that. Uh, like one time I was working with a person who was a Nazi in a past life and he actually didn't like, he didn't like in this lifetime that that's what he did. He had memories of all the stuff that he did, how proud he was in that lifetime of doing that, uh, how he, uh, on his own time, in that lifetime, connected with dark forces to uh, different occult practices, and was very excited in that lifetime that, 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 that those entities used him special enough to, to work with him. And he very happily worked with those uh, dark forces. He felt that it, they made him more powerful. But in this lifetime, they came, they came to collect. They wanted all kinds of stuff from him. They were really trashing his interpersonal relationships. He couldn't keep a job. They just kept taking from him. And that's when he realized that maybe that was not the best decision to work with those entities. And it made him really rethink his past. Um, and I, and if I recall correctly, he really didn't like the fact that he was a Nazi in a past life, but he did like, but he did like the power. He just didn't, he, he wanted the power, but he didn't want it in a Nazi form. Yeah. So he had his own per, in personal issues with the power. And uh, for him, the lesson is, well, how do you be loving? Because well, love is power too. It's a very positive, strong power that allows you to heal allows you to heal others, help people. 
he 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 had a hard time understanding how to move from a darker power into a lighter power. So that's his journey. That's his lesson. But but not everyone is like that. Everyone has their own unique story as to how they encountered uh, dark forces. And imp- importantly, I have to add here that if someone does uh, encounter a dark force and, and makes uh, some sort of a deal with them, uh, th- that's the important part. Is it, it, There's always authorization from the person for the involvement from the, dark, for, from the dark force. It can't really ever be by force. There is always some authorization, some agreement, um, even if it's unconscious. And that may seem really unfair, and I also think it's unfair, but uh, according to some type of universal laws that I don't 100% agree with, but I'm not the one who made them, even if you made the, the deal unconsciously, or even if you made the deal when you were three months old and your brain wasn't developed yet, but at that time you allowed an entity in, that counts. That, that, that is a cause that will then create an effect in your life. Even if you were in utero and your, your brain really was not developed yet, but you had a spirit and a soul, and let's say you were approached by a dark force entity who pretended to be light and you got fooled and you allowed that entity in, that entity is allowed in until you reach the age when you're conscious and cognizant enough to say no and kick it out. And then it's, it, it, has, it has to leave. Does that make sense? Yes. Again, the website, holistichealthcoachingny.com. We're going to take a quick break. Ariel Starbird, Dark Force Attachments, How Soul Loss and Soul Retrieval Are Connected to That. When you say no, you have divine right to be your own person, your own being. And it's the minute you say, I've had enough, that's it, leave, then that's what happens. But you have to be strong in that knowing and in your own integrity to say that's enough and not backtrack. Well, let me rephrase what I said. They do have to leave, but they don't always leave. They don't play fair. So when you say no and you, and you, and you set the intention to kick them out, they don't immediately leave necessarily, but they have to. What the, the difference is then when they have to, when you're saying no, you can recruit help. Like if you had a, if you had a squatter, if you had a robber in your house and you told them you must leave immediately, they're probably not going to immediately leave. They're going to continue to rob until you physically throw them out and call the police. It's just like that in the spiritual realm. Yeah, they have to leave by law. They have to. But do they, do they pay attention to the law? <laughs> Since when? So you have to fight. Sometimes you have to fight. You have to physically kick them out, or spiritually in this case, although it's physical, it becomes physical too. Yeah. It's a battle inside your body and your mind and your soul. And for most people, I'll just be completely honest with you and very transparent, most people are not prepared for that fight. They don't realize they need to do it. Uh, they wish they didn't have to do it. They, even if, even if they read a book about it, they still wouldn't know what to do. They, when they try to do it on their own, they make mistakes. It's a mess. Yeah. I mean, it's just like if you had a robber in your house, but you got no, no weapons of defense and you weren't prepared. What, what are you going to do exactly? They've got weapons and they're prepared. What, what can you do? Well, you need help. That, that's the bottom line is you need help. You, you, mo- most people can't handle it. On the, unless they've prepared for years and years for something like this, they, they're not prepared. They need help. And most people have, are not prepared. And, you know, and, and even if they try to prepare, uh, like they got some sage and they got some crystals, even, like if you're dealing with a very, very serious dark force, that's not going to be enough. It's a battle. And it's a battle of wills, and it's a and it's a it's a real battle, just like just like you would physically have a fight with somebody. If they are more powerful than you, if they are more practiced and trained and more skilled than you, they will win. Even if we, even if the law says they have to leave, if they're stronger than you, they will not leave. That's just the reality. And so, people at that point need help. And that's what I did. That's what John did for many years is help people in that way. And, uh, and that's what I did for many years is help people in that way. Uh, and I've had a lot of success. A lot of people got a lot better. 
but there was always some percent of people, I'll just mention it here, there was always some percent of people that never quite learned a lesson. They didn't fully learn and understand why this happened to them. Even though part of my coaching is to go into that, to go deeply into why it happened. What was, what was, what type of entity was it? When did it attach and why did it attach and how to prevent it in the future? Some people got to learn the hard way. There's always some small percent of people that got to learn the hard way and they end up doing something more, whatever it is, whether it's drugs or drinking or whatever it is that they do that attracts dark forces again. And there's, there's kind of not much you can do for a person like that who insists on doing things they know are bad. If they're going to entertain vices, then that's on them. But, uh, but people who do follow, uh, they, they, they fix their, they correct their path. They fix their life. They fix their nutrition. They, um, they, they clean their mind, you know, what thoughts they're thinking. They heal their trauma from the past. Uh, they, they disconnect from things and people that are toxic and to them and that are draining to them. Uh, they eliminate sources of stress. They eliminate sources of dark force attached too. There's multiple sources. And if they really correct their path and go in the right direction, it's not likely they're going to get another energy to that degree. They might get little ones here and there, but I usually train my clients to clear off little things. Kind of like if you, you know, that's a little bit inevitable. It's like if you go outside, you're going to get, you're going to get dirt on you. You're going to have to take a shower. So doing, doing like regular daily clearing, that we got to be doing all the time. But this deep, deep, um, entrenchment with dark forces that only happens if people are pursuing some sort of dark path or, or those of very serious abuse of trauma where they, they really didn't know they were, they were sort of uh, going into a mentally dark direction, but they didn't realize uh, because they were either very young or they were in a, in a situation with, where there was no alternative. There's a variety of reasons why somebody could be dragged into a, uh, kind of against their will into a, a dark path. Uh, and, and as soon as they realize that they've gone, the, you know, down that path, they do change. Like people who are raised in a satanic cult, for example, if they were born into it and there was no other alternative, they didn't know any different. Maybe deep down they did, but you still have to act a certain way. And then once they're out of, once they're out of the cult, they, they, they do want to change and they do. And, and, uh, you know, once they have their freedom, they, you know, they, they do become more positive. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. And it, it does take sometimes somebody else who's able to assist you, and that's why that's why I wanted you to address this topic. Now, so when you're doing that, there's also soul loss. So how does that happen when you've got the attachment? Soul loss is another shamanic concept that's very important. And maybe I should have explained soul loss first, actually, but that's okay. Um, so when people have traumatic experiences, it, like let's say a regular person, they're not trying to do anything evil or negative or bad. They, uh, they have trauma. They have difficult things in their life, like everyone does. They're stressful. They have to feel weak. There's something that's called uh, soul loss, where they can lose parts of their soul. Another way to say it is that they lose... Uh, they lose connection with certain aspects of their soul because some people would say, well, you can't ultimately lose your soul. That's true. But ultimately there's no time either. Ultimately there's no human. There's just spirit. So like at what level, right? At some level, everything is spirit and everything is light. But at, at this level here and now, uh, you could have an experience of loss of your soul and, and law an experience of trauma and experience of a dissociation an experience of, of extreme stress and schisms in your personality. So when that happens, uh, it leaves a hole, like, like Swiss cheese, it leaves a hole in your energy field. And then that's where dark force entities will attach to in those holes. It, partly because nature abhors vacuums and air, something will fill the vacuum. And partly it's because um, it's the same type of energy. Whatever the emotional uh, imprint is that's associated with that trauma, that emotional imprint is of a certain negative frequency, that serves as a magnet for the same type of energy that then is uh, the, the, the demonic or dark force attachment is then a manifestation of that same type of energy. 
and essentially it um, it will amplify it if that makes sense. It will it will amplify it until you you have to see it. You know, in that sense, they do serve a purpose. Strangely, like if someone has most most of the time when people have had uh, PTSD, they don't remember the trauma. But when they constantly have certain scenarios play out in their life that are choreographed by these dark forces, they have to pay attention. When they see something for now the tenth time, they're like, "Okay, why is this happening?" And the question can eventually be answered by healing that trauma, and then the entity will have nothing to be attached to. So, so in that sense, ultimately, cosmically, they do serve a purpose by showing us those dark aspects of our own nature in, in the external world that otherwise we don't have a chance to see because they're, they're, they're hidden in our conscious or, or they're hidden within our ancestral line. You know, an ancestor, you know, 15 generations ago could have made a really bad decision that affected the entire family line. And now this innocent person who's just trying to do good in the world might have this, this pattern in their energy field. And the pattern will keep manifesting something negative. And uh, so that, that answer, is the, that's one of the answers to that age-old question, why do bad things happen to good people? Sometimes it's because, you know, an ancestor 15 generations ago did, did something. At that time, there was no way to resolve it. But now this good person can resolve it. They have the intelligence, they have the wherewithal, and when they observe a pattern appearing in their life, they will resolve it. So, uh, so in that sense, you're not really living only your own pattern. You're living all of your ancestral patterns. They're all there somewhere in your DNA. And they can get triggered by various events. So we're pretty complicated beings. And that's why there isn't just one easy answer as to why someone had soul loss, why someone had trauma and another person didn't, why one person had a, a dark force attachment and another person didn't. Uh, maybe they were raised in the same family or maybe they were in the same situation, but one person had severe trauma and the other person walked out like nothing happened. Uh, because people are very, very different internally. Um, even twins are, 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 there's something different about them. They're very similar, but something is different. So but coming back to the idea of, of soul loss is that um, people have asked me, do soul parts come back by themselves? And also sometimes I think they do once you are on a path of healing, they do. But not, that's not totally common. It's not like an everyday experience for people. Most of the time those soul parts left for a reason they don't want to come back they know this uh, this realm as dangerous and traumatic and bad and they are usually hiding in a much more pleasant realm usually hanging out with a guide or an angel having a good time and they don't really want to come back and so again it takes someone like a shaman uh, or a spiritually aware person who can go in and communicate with those soul parts and understand their journey and understand why they disconnected and have a conversation. I should be able to talk to the soul and have a, uh, a heart to heart conversation and help the soul part to come back, to see, a, to see a reason to come back. Uh, and it essentially we have to explain that the person really needs the soul part. It's reminding the soul part that they're actually a separate, separate uh, part, that they're meant to be part of a whole, a much bigger, important whole. Um, you know, of that entire soul. And once they're reminded, they, they do usually remember that, that they are and that they have a bigger purpose rather than just hiding somewhere. And uh, so once they are brought back, um, the person's life within some, you know, within two to six months typically changes, can change very radically uh, once they get their soul back. Um, and, and so, Doing a soul retrieval does go hand in hand with clearing dark force attachments because during the time that that soul part was not there, that's where usually dark force entities or other different types of negative attachments formed in those places where the soul part should have been. And so those dark force attachments have to be cleared. It doesn't really matter so much. There isn't like a one, one size fit all solution to whether you first clear the entity and, and then 
remove the soul part of first, or I'm sorry, bring back the soul part of first, bring back the soul part, then remove the entity. It's, it's also kind of different for different people, as long as both get done. Uh, and sometimes a person will have many entities. If a soul part is very big, like sometimes, uh, sometimes people have very severe trauma and the soul part they lost is, is a very large uh, part that has a lot of gifts and talents and a lot of abilities of that soul. And the person just will not be able to have optimal health. They will not be able to achieve their ultimate goals without that soul part. It's, it is just not possible. They will struggle to achieve, uh, to achieve an even sort of minor goals. Uh, and I've had clients who never had uh, like drug addictions or, or alcohol addictions. They've never had, they've never, you know, done anything criminal or evil, but they struggle continually to accomplish even the basics in life. Like they will seek a job and, and they'll be working for a while. It'll be the job of their dreams. And somehow everything falls apart. They'll be building a business. Suddenly everything falls apart. They tell me that all the time. I'll be working so hard. I'll be striving. Everything seems to come together. And then everything falls apart. I don't understand why. And I've heard that story so many times over and over that what I realized is it actually takes, our soul is the one who's creating reality. It's not really the mind. The mind is like the computer, the interface between the reality that's around us and our soul. It's the feedback mechanism that that tells us how we're doing in a way. Uh, But it's the soul that's creating everything. And if you don't have enough soul, you don't have enough power to maintain and manage your own creation. The, the bigger your soul, the more healthy your soul, the more you can create. How is it that some people build five multi-million dollar businesses, have hundreds of employees who are happy, who love working with this person, they have lots of projects, they just have a lot going on, they have the same amount of time, they might necessarily have a genius IQ, they might have a regular IQ, but they're doing that. And then other people seem to just struggle to, to even like pay the bills. Why? Um, so a lot of it has to do with the soul and the power of the soul. Not only there's other, there's other important, uh, aspects to consider like a person's spiritual maturity, uh, maybe personality issues, but the soul has a lot to do with it. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, your website, holistichealthcoachingny.com. I wanted to ask you real quickly, the Mesa Carrier, and this is in the lineage of the Caro Earth Keepers of the Andes. Can you, that is a fascinating topic. Do you have anything that specifically that you learned that you, you know, the takeaway from being from that? Yes, I'm glad I did that. Uh, it definitely, there's something very unique in that form of healing um, in, in that type of shaman, it's very beautiful to work in that way. Uh, it, it is, it, it's a way of working with the soul, like all shamanism is, but working with the Mesa, which for people who don't know what that is, it's essentially a shamanic altar. It has stones in it and the stones connect you with all the other stone altars uh, on this planet. And, and I think in the universe, if you wanted it, uh, and it connects you with the earth herself. Um, and it allows you to, uh, to work with energies uh, in, a, in a more direct, like working with energy directly, not through the mind, not through psychological concepts, not through the body, but directly with energy and the soul. And I know they're around. I see them uh, all the time. Uh, the, the care, like the ones who are on the other side who are helping uh, people who are doing this work. And, uh, and I, and I know that when I do work with my clients, they come through and they do what they do on the other side. So, uh, in that sense, you know, in the last session I said, I'm sorry, in the last uh, show I said, said I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. I feel that all the time because I work with the archangels. I work with different shamanic lineages. I've had an incredible mentor, John, that I talked about in the last uh, talk show. Uh, there's a lot of beings that I work with, um, uh, and uh, not, in, in the entire archangelic and angelic realm, it's infinite. It's infinite being. At any given moment, I might work with several, but it's like call, being able to call backup. I can always call more and more backup, and that's very, very important. That's the big difference between how I work and how like someone like a beginner, where they're trying to do things by their own power. Um, it, it's just not possible. And they're not necessarily doing it out of vanity, also some people are. It's more that they don't they don't know how to work with higher power. 
Um, but it's very important to be able to be successful in clearing out powerful dark forces. You have to be working with positive beings of greater force, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, we're going to have to wrap up. I just wanted to throw that in there because you also, your other background, you know, you, you mentioned, and last time we got more into John Livingston, who had experience getting, uh, helping people with shamanic exorcism and dealing with dark forces you're talking about right now. But you also have experience having fa- past life regression therapy with uh, Brian Weiss. And so there's a lot of other things that people can get from your bio. I just wanted to address that quickly because the Caro, I think, are f- a fascinating people and their their connections to Earth and Earth spirits, I think, right now are really, really helpful for people who are trying to figure out their way in the world and trying to basically address some of the things that we're dealing with with climate change. And I think that helps a lot, be having that connection. I think so as well. You know, when people go deep down into these rabbit holes, they find the real truth. It's not whatever the media says about it. I just kind of have to throw that in. But whatever, whatever the mainstream media, you know, says about climate change, I don't believe any of it. That's not, I don't believe that they believe. I don't believe they believe what they're saying. I, when you really go down into these rabbit holes and work with these powerful light beings, you learn something entirely different that you won't find in any newspaper. You might not even find it in a book. Um, there's a reason why the shamanic tradition is oral, why they don't write books. It's not because they're illiterate. It's because you're meant to learn how to work with these higher beings who will tell you in real time what's going on. And do you know how many times uh, I would see a certain story and my guide would tell me, actually, none of that is true, literally zero. Uh, and it, and it, that kind of that kind of help from guides really helps because if, if you know, there are so many times when clients come and and uh, tell me various things like oh yeah I'm doing great with my diet and the guys are like actually eating junk food every day uh, and I ask them but have you been to tell me Ozzy have you been eating junk food oh how did you know and so uh, when your guides tell you the truth uh, about anything as long as you're open minded you, you will know you will know the truth of what's really going on. For anyone who wants to connect with you, again, the website, holistichealthcoachingny.com. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate being able to share in this way. I'll put links in the description for the show. Thanks for listening. Stay curious.